Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I am Nabi Talianagi. I will be presenting on our final layer project hardware implementation of an HEVC encoder. First, let's take a look at video. Initially, video was something we had to go to the film hall to watch. The television put videos to our home. Then came the laptop and now we have video in our mobiles. It's predicted that in coming years, video will be the biggest contributor in internet traffic. The story is still with storage. When the first time H.261 came to life, video is something stored on VHS. It was succeeded by DVDs and then using Blu-ray discs. Also, people are no longer willing to watch 360 videos or even 480p. People are now looking for 720p HD and even Quad HD. And that's where HEVC comes to picture. HEVC or high intensity video quality is the latest video quality standard which is issued by the ITUT which promised to give a 50% bitrate reduction when compared with the previous standard. Let me show you here a video encoded using HEVC standard and H264 standard to see the difference. Here you see while the two videos are almost no different H.264 requires something around 6,000 kbps and in HEVC the same video is encoded at around 2,300 bits per second. However, HEVC has a catch. As the standard is targeting 2013-2023 period, the standard is intensively complex. That means a modern laptop or computer today cannot encode an HD quality video in real time. And that is where our project comes to picture. By using advanced features in hardware, we manage to build an HD encoder which encodes in real time. A video frame is a sequence of pixel levels. Each pixel represents the intensity level in binary. A video, in simple, is a, se is a series of such frames. In our encoder, what happens is, each frame is accepted and then converted to a bit stream which HEVC compact. Here you see the main sub-modules in our project. The quad repartition module, the intraprediction module, the transformation module, the reconstruction module and the binary code. The first module is Quad Repartition Module. When encoding, the video needs to be divided to different sizes of blocks. This module is responsible of finding the block structure which would result in most efficient encoding. There are two ways of doing it. In software, each and every mode is evaluated one after the other. However, in RTL, as we can do many operations in parallel, we can find the optimum prediction structure in less number of clock cycles, vastly reducing the encoding time needed. The partition structure is then passed to the intra-prediction module. Intra-prediction is predicting each block using its neighboring pixel values. The HEVC standard defines 35 different prediction directions. In software, each mode has to be evaluated one after the other. As we are using RTL, all 35 modes can be evaluated simultaneously and the best mode can be formed. Combination of such predicted blocks is called the predicted image. Here you see such predicted image. It closely resembles the original but there is a marked difference. This difference or the residuals are then sent to the transform module. If you look at the residuals, they are highly uncorrelated and unevenly distributed. However, the transform coefficients resulting in performing a DCT or DST transform are highly localized at the top left corner of each block. So, such transform coefficients are the only thing needed to be sent. They are then sent to the cover, Context Adaptive Binary Arithmetic Coder. It has two modes, Arithmetic Coding Mode and Bypass Coding Mode. In Arithmetic Coding, it looks for similar context elements and group them together. 
reducing the number of bits need to be sent. A combination of all of them results in something close to 50 times compression. So how does our results look? On left, you see a resulting frame from our encoder and on right, a resulting frame from X265 encoder, a widely used free software encoder. You see, there's no difference for the naked eye. So how does mathematical measurements look? Here you see a comparison of the two encoders using PSNR and mean square error. You see PSNR and mean square error values for the two encoders are very close to each other with our encoder falling slightly behind. However, while X265 requires more than one minute to encode a five second video, our encoder needs only 4.2 seconds. Hence, we managed to achieve next generation video coding in real time. Thank you.